welcome to the podcast. The 23rd of June is International Women in Engineering Day, so here we are with a special bonus episode to share our personal experiences, thoughts, hopes and dreams. Enjoy! Hello everyone, my name is Royd al Hamed, and I'm glad to be a part of this great podcast. I just wanted to wish everyone a happy International Women in Engineering Day and share a bit on why I became an, an engineer. So it's all started me as a kid, loving to construct stuff from almost anything that I can find in the house. So I thought that what architects do, then later on I found out that what civil engineers does. I was persuaded to go in a different field. However, things did not work out and I ended up doing engineering, which I absolutely love. Then after doing my bachelor degree in civil engineering, I did a master in structural engineering and then did my PhD in structural and fire safety engineering. And today I'm fortunate enough to be a lecturer in civil engineering, teach all young engineers all about structures and how to build the stuff and pass this knowledge on. It's been a delightful ride for me and I really enjoy being an engineer. So happy International Women Engineer Day, everyone. Hi, my name is Anika and I'm a research fellow in nuclear fusion and I would like to wish everybody a happy International Women in Engineering Day. A little bit about myself, I hadn't always planned to be an engineer. I was always very inquisitive as a child, but actually when I was at school, I wanted to study something else, geography. I had a bit of a mishap with my exam and missed a page in my exams. And because my other subjects were science and maths, I thought engineering would be a good option because it was kind of a combination of, of all of them. And I found it really hard to specialize and stick to one thing. And I liked the variety that I offered. So I ended up studying mechanical engineering. And then during my mechanical engineering degree, I took some nuclear modules, which I found really, really interesting. And then somehow at the end of my three-year degree, I saw an advertisement for PhDs in nuclear fusion. And I thought, why not? It sounds really cool and really exciting. And I was really lucky and I got it. And since then, I haven't looked back and I'm still in the field of nuclear fusion. I've worked in lots of different places, focusing on engineering and material side of things. And so I'm really, really lucky to be in the situation that I am. And I'm so fortunate for all the opportunities that were given to me. So I think it's really important that we share opportunities and share our knowledge. And I hope by being on this podcast, we can continue to share knowledge with the new generation of women scientists and engineers and support them in helping them to pursue their dreams. I'm Laura Lay. I'm the producer for this podcast. And I've also had quite a varied career in science and engineering, spanning carbon capture, radiation effects in material science and nuclear engineering. And when I was in school, we didn't really learn about many subjects. So for me, science was the most interesting thing. So that's what I studied at university. I didn't even really encounter engineering until after I finished my undergraduate degree. Now, my interest in science was that we could learn about the world. But then I started to think that if we want to use that knowledge, if you want to create things, that's essentially what engineering is. And I really like creating things. So in hindsight, maybe I should have studied engineering after all. And there are loads of female engineers in this podcasting team, and I've learned so much from them. I really value their viewpoints and their creativity. And we've had so much fun planning and recording each episode. So I'm so glad that I get to work with them. I'll now pass on to Antonia Cheng, who did actually study engineering in her undergraduate degree. And she's going to start off telling us about some thoughts she wants to share on pioneering women. It's International Women in Engineering Day on the 23rd of June, and I've been asked to reflect on my career and who or what has inspired me. One person that comes to mind is Mary Curie. She's well known for her work in radiation and where it comes from. She became the first woman to receive the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, but I think what stood out to me was her background. It's contrary to many other scientists at the time, not all women had secondary education and even fewer were able to attend university. When I tried to look up these statistics behind it, I just found a really long Wikipedia page covering the timeline of women in science. Whilst it's long, I still don't think it would have been as easy to list it all if it was more commonplace. Whilst it's really exciting to see a lot of firsts, I think it's also a lot of work being the first. So I think that shows the progress we have made since then. 
Antonia, could you also tell us about some of your experience during your undergraduate degree? Whilst at university, I drew a lot of inspiration and motivation from being part of a volunteering organisation called Engineers Without Borders. Pretty well known that there are less women than men in engineering, but it almost came to parity at these events and at their leadership level. I think there was something about the joint interest of using engineering for improving quality of life, alleviating poverty and overall sustainable development that must have drawn us all together. I got to meet like-minded people and made some great friendships, including Cara, who is also on this podcast. And we would have these thought-provoking chats, just like on our podcast, but with a little less polish and more student griminess. Hi, I'm Carmel Holland, and I am a social impact and sustainability specialist, or what I'm commonly called now is a social value specialist. My background is in civil engineering, but I call myself a professional jack of all trades. The reason I got into civil engineering and why I call myself a jack of all trades is that you can bring together the physics, the maths, the data science, the digital tools alongside the management, the geography, the people side of things. And you're really understanding stakeholders and the impact on people's lives of engineering. And that's what I'm really passionate about, the connection between how things work, but also why we build them the way we do. So my story of how I got into engineering, I think really I can trace it back to understanding that I read a book called Mind Boggling Buildings when I was a kid. I just loved hearing the stories of how these buildings were built, but also how they're really connected with the culture of everyday life at the time. But then I went on, I was really fortunate. I did the engineering education scheme when I was still at high school and I went on to become the Northern Ireland Young Engineering Team of the Year. I then did my undergraduate and master's during which I was fortunate enough to be part of Engineers Without Borders, a voluntary organisation. And then I got um, a summer research project, which I then went on to do a European Commission internship in Italy for a few months of the engineering research. And after that, my PhD, which was funded by industry and the research councils. And then after that, I'm now doing an Innovate UK funded research project for a couple of years. So I've really been lucky that I've been able to get lots of different types of opportunities to be able to work in this niche, which is bringing together lots of different areas of different fields and different uh, backgrounds. And so that's the kind of thing that you like, you know, understanding science, but applying it to everyday life. Then that's why I think engineering is just a really interesting place to be. My name is Amina and I would like to wish everybody happy International Women in Engineering Day. I feel it's so important for women to support other women on occasions like these because there are so many women out there who would be the perfect personality to fit into the science and engineering world, but perhaps they think that it's a male-dominated field and they're not so accommodating and just won't. Part of the reason why we do this podcast is to break down barriers and to show that engineering is accessible to every gender and is actually quite enjoyable. And we sincerely hope that that comes across in our podcast. There doesn't have to be a traditional route that everyone fits into. Engineers come from all different backgrounds and experiences. I myself was quite an inquisitive individual from quite a young age, which now my daughters have inherited. And sometimes we have great lengthy discussions, but sometimes I would just like them to accept my answer and the question stop. But they don't often stop. (laughs) I have a material science and engineering bachelor's, followed by a nuclear science and technology master's, which then led me into being a nuclear safety engineer at Rolls-Royce for eight years. I've now gone back to university to do a PhD in nuclear engineering at Manchester University. So as you can see, I don't think I have a very traditional route, but I've just gone where the opportunities have taken me and I've thoroughly enjoyed it. And I've come across some really amazing people. I have found everyone to be really, really accommodating. We sincerely hope that we can inspire the future generation into science and engineering. Please keep listening to the podcast for some interesting conversations and please get involved. (music) 